Yeah. Welcome back, and we have Tim Alexander. Tim, of course, uh, contributes regularly on our live stream TV channel. I guess we're all your recent personal things. Uh, hopefully, you're getting back up on the air because you've got some amazing analysis of the military and the other strategic issues, able to play as as Spock said, multi-level space chess. The uh, issue, Tim, uh, that well, the first news story that you have. I wanted to expand on this, and I thought this is a little shocking because my interaction with U.S. Senator Dianne Feinstein, who's head of the Senate Intelligence Committee. Uh, and her statement recently about Israel, which is, quote, we cannot let Israel determine when and where the United States goes to war. She obviously knows something that scared literally the, quote, H-E double hockey stick out of her because uh, she's a lockstep, has been for years, supporter of the insane, sabotaging, satanistic, globalistly controlled Rothschild and state of Israel. And uh, now this, when she's balking this, it means that you, I, you, I like your term you call BB666. Obviously, this man is absolutely determined with the Saudis to precipitate a nuclear war against Iran this year. And in fact, if there's not a peace treaty, almost by the summer, we can guarantee there will be a nuclear war in the Middle East. Yeah, uh, I, uh, I posted that just after midnight last night before I went to bed, and I, I, I sometimes do a quick survey uh, of you know the latest stuff before I go to bed just to keep me awake. <laughs> anyway, I, I saw that and I, it, it blew me away. But yeah, well, it, it, she knows something. She knows something that even in her uh, sold out, you know, like the old red line where you always draw red lines. She obviously knows something that is going to pull America into a. Not just a regional nuclear war in the Middle East, but a global thermonuclear well, war with it, Russia it, and China. It, it, it's going. First off, her her first interest is not California or the United States. It's Israel. She's an Israeli firster, and uh, she knows. And many of the the top people in Israel uh, who are not buying into Netanyahu's nuttiness, uh, they know that. The six million Jews in Israel are apt to be wiped out uh, if if we begin or if Israel begins a war with Iran. And this bill that uh, 58 U.S. senators have now uh, signed on to to basically tear up the peace agreement that uh, we and uh, the uh, G what was it G8 uh, nations made with uh, Iran and is about to be implemented uh, and impose additional sanctions. Uh, if we do that, if we go that route, then uh, we we may very well trigger a, a general Middle East war, which will in turn may trigger a, a, a global thermonuclear the, the, war. The, the, and there's no may that. about it. In fact, it was the, there's no may about it. I'll give you an example. We have the Russian Black Sea Fleet that NATO is, is uh, targeting, okay? We have the new deployment of American first strike missiles that'll hit in the launch phase, the Russian new uh, new uh, Topol M missiles. Right. And what happens is we have we have China now getting far more aggressive to say they're gonna seize an island four hundred miles off their coast. The Japanese have basically said, you do it and we're gonna smack you into into annihilation. And the Japanese, by the way, can eliminate in thirty minutes the entire uh, Chinese Navy and Air Force. I mean, they're, they're gone. They're, people don't understand just how giant the Japanese military machine is. It's very well, advanced. The, the, the Japanese have the capacity to go nuclear practically overnight. And that's Not just nuclear, yeah, their conventional Fukushima was their, all about. Their conventional Navy and their carrier ships and their anti missile systems, and they walk lockstep with America and developing new systems, including plunking down a giant chunk of money did on Mr. Abe with the U.S. government to co-develop these uh, missile defense systems as well, the latest versions for Japan. So, uh, you know, the fact that they're now also threatening to seize an island in the Philippines, say, well, you won't let us get this little rock that the Chinese are trying to say that we could put a large airport on, which if they paid the entire island, they couldn't put a 737 on it, so that's patently ridiculous. The Chinese just want to seize the entire area in the airspace because they want the oil and gas in the South China Sea and the seafood because the Japanese now are no longer going to eat any food on the eastern side of Japan because it's toxic and radioactive. I think that's all true, but remember you have a, a, a extremely pro-war, uh, almost a neocom Japanese government under Abe, and uh, he has been baiting the Chinese, and it doesn't take a whole lot for the Japanese in no, particular. No, no, no. You, you, don't the you, you, you don't need to bait the Chinese. You don't need to bait the Chinese. 
the, the Chinese basically right now, too, part of the reason why they're getting more aggressive is to divert away from their internal domestic problems that the Chinese economy is about to explode. They have more credit expansion in the past five years than all the other banks in the world combined. And, and on top of with that, if you look what is happening to the Baltic uh, Dry Index, that is very scary. Tell us about that. What, what is it? Uh, thinking. Tell and us what the Baltic Dry Index is, because for those who are novices at this, this is a list of goods and services that are shipped around the world, uh, primarily by ship. And when the Baltic Dry Index drops, this is a prelude to, number one, economic collapse, and economic collapse is always a prelude to war. Yeah, absolutely. And, and the Baltic Dry Index is, is going to Davy Jones' locker, it appears. Uh, right. It started the year out bad, and uh, it, it's just for nine, ten days now, it's just going down, 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 down. And uh, the, 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 the really scary thing as we head into uh, 2014 now, we're, we're, you know, a couple weeks into it, uh, we, we, uh, it, 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 we see, all the indicators are flashing red. Uh, economically, militarily, and it, that doesn't mean it can't be stopped. That doesn't mean that it's, everything is absolutely locked in place. But I want to tell you, Diane Feinstein is no favorite of mine, and I've, I've, I've uh, made comments about her on, on your show before and on my blog. But uh, if the Diana Feinsteins on the uh, Israeli side don't win, then we're in a world of hurt. If they win, uh, we may have a breather. And uh, there's a lot of people, very powerful people in Israel, who uh, are aligned with her uh, and don't want this drive towards war with Iran. But, yeah, but they're, they're, they're not the only player in it. Basically, Saudi Arabia knows. They keep on saying that maybe, maybe Iran has a nuclear weapon. I have news for them. They've had it for about seven years. Uh, they have them not only from Pakistan, but they also have had uh, the capacity to make nuclear weapons for some years. But they, even if you dismiss their nuclear weapons, they have drones, which are world class. They have the most advanced biological weapons from the bi Russian biopreparat program in conjunction with Syria, as we talked about before. Uh, the Iranians are no slouches. No, if they no. started. If they start an attack on Iran, their uh, Shahib-3 missile system, which can now go thousands of miles, can strike anywhere, not only in the Middle East, but also these new systems can go even as far as in, into well, Europe. Well, and, and, you know, Abdullah and his brothers, who snuck into the United States 20 years ago, and, and 10,000 others, we can, uh, upon receiving a coded message, get uh, some frozen material out of their uh, kitchen freezer and make a little concoction and go to the local shopping mall or movie theater or, or church or whatever. And uh, as they walk around, look like they're talking in their phone or something, they're really atomizing with a little pump uh, some viral material. And two weeks later, people begin to die of a weird hemorrhagic fever that's never been seen before or some other viral disease. They have the capacity to kill uh, the the numbers of people in the billions that uh, we have heretofore only seen with global strategic thermonuclear warfare, and that's the advanced bio war. Yeah. That's recombinant yeah, yeah. DNA genetic engineering technology based, yeah, but, and it's yeah. scary. Now, Tim, that's uh, what I call what I call first level, which means you release it on the ground, boom, it kills everybody. But what we have right now is really what I call pre-pandemic, uh, pre-advanced uh, biological weapons versions like the PH1N1 flu, which is now spreading across America. If it reaches 3 to 5% case fatality rate, society will shut down from 6 to 10 weeks at least. And that, in one wave, and you can have multiple waves over a period of years. We yeah, have these. Correct. The, we have the bear coronavirus. Think that came from Iran, by the way. No, no. These these are bioweapons. I have a scientist in Colorado, one from DHS, and one from China, from Shanghai, that the H7N9 was a biological weapon with the fastest replication rate of any flu virus in human history. I mean, people need to understand when we're reporting this, you're not going to hear this on this news statement news, which puts your brain to sleep.
until now we have been losing the war. The, uh, uh, the, the, the six corporations that, uh, the globalist corporations and their Zionist uh, staff that control the mainstream news media in America, uh, they have gotten so bad that uh, the majority of young people, uh, young adults do, and teenagers no longer listen to any of their uh, television news. Of course not. Young people listen to people like us. Welcome back to the Nuclear Medical Report. Tim, Tim, your website is Europe Business, B-U-S-I-N-E-S with one S dot blogspot dot com. You've got listeners all around the world. If you take a perspective of being a uh, believer, uh, a uh, if you want to call it his history and geopolitical analyst, you've worked as a consultant. You were going to set up a third news arm years ago before your wife got cancer. Uh, when you look at all these things, because you've also done what called military strategic analysis, and every expert on and off air that I've talked to tells me if there's not a peace treaty this year, there's going to be a big war in the Middle East. And it's going yeah, to, and it, it will get out of control rapidly. Right. I mean, it's not, it's not going to be uh, a gradual thing. Once a certain line is crossed, then it's use it or lose it time. And right. that's when everything gets goes out of control. And right. they all know that. Um, ultimately, uh, and you know, the, I, and I, I talk to people about this, and I and I say, if you're a globalist and you're sitting on trillions of dollars, and basically you own most of the pie, you and your buddies own most of the pie. That's the the, the human existence. Why would you want to poison it? Why would you want to blow it up? Why would you want to have to live in a bunker the rest of your life and and multiple generations because the world is so contaminated uh, in multiple ways uh, from the evil that you've released on it. Well, right. the answer is you wouldn't. And uh, people that are pushing for the Third World War are doing so because of a demonic uh, possession. They're, they're following a demonic agenda. And I define anyone to prove to me different because it's well, not logical to the well, max. Well, the you know? average man, the, the average sheeple out there is uh, is 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 not stupid. They're willingly ignorant. I call it vicious ignorance because they're there's teeth snapping, cursing, spitting, and violently scratching. Uh, public don't want to hear the truth from those who are sent by the Most High God. History professors like yourself, geopolitical analysts, people like myself who've been on the inside and outside of government and classified operations, and want to tell people the truth to save them physically from pain, financial, physical, and otherwise, and from spiritual destruction called the second death that Jesus said, fear not he who can destroy the body, but he who can destroy the soul. The soul's not eternal. The soul can be annihilated, and the fact is that we're coming to a time where it's not the end of the world, but it's going to be the end of the world for a lot of people, because what the globalists have planned, right from the Club of Rome, right on through the Agenda 21, they want war, they want pestilence, they want the death of the Pacific Ocean, they want the world oxygen concentration to drop, they want humans in highly compacted super cities, they want, for example, a chemical disaster, you have the news article up, West Virginia chemical disaster, and it's not in the news media at all, and this is coming right down the Ohio River to the Mississippi. Uh, yeah, it, it's roughly very close to Cincinnati now. Uh, it'll be in Cincinnati this weekend. Uh, I'm uh, on the Ohio River in Evansville, Indiana. It will be here sometime next week. And then uh, towards the end of this coming week, it will be in Cairo and in the Mississippi. Uh, it's very nasty. All the cities are going to have to cut off their water supply. Uh <laughs> It's a nightmare, and I don't know how uh, the the degrade uh, the the degradation de uh, uh, formula is. I mean, I don't know how how long it will be deadly. How long it will be, uh, if not deadly, at least dangerous to human and animal life. I don't know. And right. it's slowly moving. It's this giant plug of uh, contamination. The site that uh, the company that uh, allowed it to spell basically tried to stop it with a concrete block and a bag of absorbent material. Uh, yeah. It we have 
we have done some really weird things in, in the Environmental Protection Agency. In some ways, we've just stripped it. In other ways, we've, we've made uh, the cost extremely prohibitive for small businesses. But that all fits in with this larger uh, agenda of depopulating a lot of the, uh, the country, of breaking the back of the middle class. And also breaking the minds. You have an article up about the secret deal between the DEA and Mexican ground drug lords. I do, don't usually watch movies, but I saw a movie uh, over the weekend called Two Guns. And uh, it basically, part of the scenario, without blowing the whole story, is that the DEA are in bed with the drug cartels. Well, that's normal. Fast and Furious was part of that, and no one in the Department of Justice has gone to prison. We have the grinning idiot that's the Chief Justice. No of one the, ever goes to prison. Look no at No one Wall goes Street. to jail. Yeah, no, and then no. these guys you go to the jail. You get a you get a new uh, fifty or hundred million dollar private jet. You get a new yacht. You get more girlfriends. You get more bank accounts. You get more Maseratis and Ferraris. You don't go well, to jail. It's, it's legal to actually uh, launder money here in America. Which, by the way, the I think it's the third or fourth richest man in the world is a a drug lord in Mexico that's well known. He has a giant plantation down there, and. Uh, the DEA are, are working to specifically arm specific cartels against other cartels and sanctioning specific transfer of drugs to America, and they're making sure they get to the inner cities to literally strip and destroy specific, if you want to call it, populations like the the people that live in the inner city, primary blacks and Hispanics, and we call the uh, you know the uh, you know the lower class whites that like to tattoo themselves and take drugs. So, uh, you know, this is happening. And people say, oh, no, that they don't want to do this. They want to destroy the family. That's why you look at the birth rate among black families and the rate of abortion. You're seven times more likely to be aborted if you're in utero and your skin is black. Now, Obama has made that worse. He's actually for now funding and incorporating it in Obamacare that everybody in America, except maybe a few nuns in Colorado, won't have to pay for abortions for everybody else. Or I mean, sex changes. In Colorado. <laughs> yeah, that, I mean, yeah, it was well, a well, Supreme Court well, case yeah. where where Sotomayor basically said, "No, you can't do that to the nuns." But everybody else is going to pay for abortion. So all of your tax money is going to pay for an abomination. And if we don't fight it, we're in agreement with it. And that's why, you know, the, the fact is, we're in a state now where where Satan wants to make sure the blood of the innocents is on all of our hands, not just some of our hands. Oh yeah, yeah, and and the blood of the innocents uh, is very definitely a very big thing with Satan. Because when you're, you're dealing with Satan, you're dealing with the opposite of God. Uh, it's, he's not equal to God in a negative way. He's, he's a loser. And, and you, 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 you call him Lucifer, and that's very uh, correct. Uh, I, call, I, I call it, this is the, the, what he calls Luciferians, because <laughs> high-level high, high masons are all pedophiles and they're all followers of Satan's and they're all narcissists. Because the ultimate sin of choosing for yourself what is good or evil is basically the seed, the actual nidus, the we call the the soul kernel, the atomic nuclei of evil is narcissism, isn't it? Yes, yes. Well, it it's, it, it it was Satan who turned to himself, and he wanted to be God. He was yeah. the light bearer, Lucifer. He wanted to be God. He, you know, and. He, he, he can't be God. Uh, God is God. Uh, we are his creation, and we are tied to him. But uh, Lucifer wanted to overthrow that. And yeah. that was a lie, first to himself, uh, and then to God, to <clears throat> the angelic host. And, uh, well, get right with get right with God. It's, we're in a very difficult year, and every indication is that uh, it's going to get very, very touching. Amazing yeah, update, uh, Tim. Uh, put some updates on live stream channel, pop in any day. We have lots of time space, especially in the first hours, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday. Back in a moment with an update from Chris Harris. Hour two tonight on rents. Well, I guess we shouldn't worry, should we, uh, Chris? Bobby I'm McFerrin was right. Long be <laughs> that last article you sent, and I'm going to post it up, it's like... Uh, if it wasn't horrifying, it would be really funny. Uh, and, of course, we have the statements by Kai Vetter, which I kind of did an intellectual vivisection of his incredibly insane statements. When he came back a year and a half ago from a little tour in Germany with a conference over there in, in Europe, um, as the director of nuclear engineering at UC Ber Berkeley, that was doing the testing, only testing, 
on water, food, and fish, etc., and reporting it uh, for the first year, roughly, after Fukushima. And after my contact with him, they just shut down. In fact, he's already pronounced that being the god of the science of radiotoxicology, he's already stated that before they even get their first sample of kelp from 18 different universities, sending them samples on three different data points from the area of Oregon all the way through to the Baja, California, that the results already in his, I guess he's got his Swami hat on like uh, Johnny Carson, he already knows the results will be inconsequential and shouldn't worry about your health. So don't worry about it. Don't worry, be happy, drink the, the radioactive water, go surfing, eat the radioactive fish. Don't worry, be happy, because I'm the god of radiological sciences and I pronounce it fine. And even if your skin falls off, your immune system crashes, you die of a horrible infection and radiation injury, don't worry, be happy, because when you worry, you make it double. What do you think? Well, who's that? Is that uh, Ann Coulter saying a little radiation is good for you? So, you know. But it's not well, maybe that's radiation. maybe that's the reason why she looks like a praying mantis. You know, if you ever, I've talked to people who've actually seen her up front. And it's like she does not look human. Is she really human, or is she some form of a very skinny cyborg? You know, <laughs> so, using it as an energy source. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, so this last article you have here, dated uh, today, uh, is really. Uh, I mean, this is crazy. This is from K U O W. Uh, Seattle. Tell, let's talk about this for a minute and what's in this article and well, what they're you know, planning on well, doing. Oh, well, they, you know, you, you, uh, they, uh, what was the title? The title was uh, Scientists uh, Pretty Much Say Don't Worry, Be Happy. I know I know you played that. But it's pretty uh, appropriate. But, um, you know, they're, they're supposedly taking measures. Now, this is not the first time I've seen an uh, article lately about downplaying the health effects that we're seeing uh, due to any kind of elevated radiation that is coming from Fukushima or from other sources that I'm not I'm not aware of. But the whole pro- the whole problem is that it's it's not that this is a problem. The problem is I'm seeing more and more of these kinds of articles coming out, including uh, old dredging up of uh, interviews with uh, Galen Winter, who was noted swimming in spent fuel pools, not going down to the spent fuel, mind you, but swimming in the pool to show that there aren't any health effects or anything. But, you know, even he didn't actually go down and embrace the, you know, the spent fuel assemblies and, you know, come up close and personal with it. There is a certain... So and there, there's a lot of... I, I think there's misleading on both sides, you know. But uh, it's a little alerting that when you start seeing uh, many articles coming out saying uh, downplaying the health effects, well, then you have to understand... You have to kind of think, you know, well... What, why is this? Why is this happening? I, I'm wondering. Uh, is it uh, uh, because uh, someone's going to start saying that there's really nothing that they can do, and maybe Tepco is saying that, especially since Tepco last week decided to change the name of their company and start going into the buying and selling of electrical generation. I guess it's sort of like the way Enron was doing it, and uh, they needed to, they need to generate the revenue. They definitely need that. Uh, to continue doing something with Fukushima, even though that's painlessly slow. Uh, they are, uh, I remember a long time ago, I said, no, I wouldn't be surprised if Tesco got up and walked away from the mess saying, sorry guys, uh, nothing we can do, we'll see you later. Well, I think this is a step in that direction because they have uh, recently opted for that kind of a, a, a bow out I guess that's an appropriate way of putting it, a bow out of the generation end of electrical production into the wheeling or the buying. You heard, you heard the term gamma ray uh, kamikaze, right? From the, yeah. the uh, young people that are minimally trained, often homeless, or people that have debts to the Yakuza in Japan are, are literally told to go in there. And if you go into the highly radioactive areas like radon round reactor number one and three, you'll probably have about an hour of exposure before you will absolutely 100% die. And if you have less exposure, there's not they're covering with lead shielding their dosimetry cards that continue to work. What's going to happen, this is, a, this is above a prediction and below a prophecy, but it's going to happen probably this year, is we'll have enough radiation release that people in, in Tokyo and surrounding northern prefectures will get acutely ill and they won't be able to cover it up. We'll also start seeing levels of radiation on the beaches along the western coast and the deaths of sea life to the level where the alarmists, the environmentalists, especially now the cities like the uh, town of Berkeley, 
are actually were the first to actually said they're going to start pushing for sampling testing. And it's un, it's silly that after the town of Berkeley was pushing for sampling testing last week and passed it to the city council, the University of Berkeley, that's housed in the town, and Kai Vetter, who is basically disinformation op, somebody tapped on his door and said, Mr. Kai Vetter, I mean, Professor, um, you've been reporting a lot of nuclear material that has not been sanctioned by Homeland Security, etc. It's a matter of national security. We would appreciate you toning down your uh, presentations to the public and, uh, you know, uh, putting a little water on the fire. And they put water on the fire, all right. They're telling people, don't worry, be happy. Uh, this is very, very obscene. Uh, the public are going to get mad as hell like the movie network. And they're not going to take it anymore. And if see, people see me, I want occasionally go over the edges because when, uh, number one, I'm not included in the dialogue, and that means, uh, you know, people interviewing or asking questions and they don't ask Deagle my opinion on, for example, Arnie Gunderson's statement that, by the way, it's all over and after 90 days, don't worry about radio ID and that's gone. Why did they get 14,000 cards, not doses, 14,000 car million cards of uh, potassium iodate? Well, it's not for a future event, Arnie. It's because not only will you have the collapse of the cooling pools and subsidence or in an earthquake, but there's still massive generation of radio ID. Plus, you need to do what's called mitochondrial recovery or resurrection. And the problem is, without radio iodine, your mitochondria don't you don't make new ones. Without getting blocking the radio iodine, because it's going to block normal mitochondrial genesis. What I see happening is the concentrations of strontium and cesium are really going to start to take their effect. And I predict an evacuation of northern Japan this year. The wealthy, the smart, who have contacted us over the last three years, they're gone. And if they're not gone, they've got a home elsewhere, and they're spending minimum time, and they're trying to see whatever they can do to minimize their exposure to radioactive water, food, air, etc. Uh, the, they've moved to southern Japan. I've had contacts with people that lived in the area around Tokyo, and they've gone to southern Japan. Interesting, the town that one of the gentlemen moved his family to was Hiroshima, which is in southern Japan. <laughs> he moved from Fukushima to Hiroshima to get away from the effects of a nuclear bomb, which is what these are, dirty bombs. Is that funny or what? That's ironic. That's ironic. Moved to Hiroshima. <laughs> Move to the ground zero of a of a historic explosion, right? right. Yeah, I guess uh, the, the feds are supposedly they're buying all that uh, the uh, iodine. I guess what they were this shows how not so smart they were. They should have been buying new well, iodine. They, they know they know the, <laughs> exactly. The triodine is safe, much more powerful, and will resurrect your mitochondria. What they're really worried about is they want all these troops ready in case the population goes crazy because they're getting become toxic zombies. And the population goes crazy when they realize the government lied to them. Welcome back. And uh, they did a, a drilling uh, 75 feet down, which is 25 meters. And they know they don't have concordant containment of the concorium. Another bad statement that made by Ernie was that... Uh, the corium's down just in the concrete, and it's kind of mixing with clean water, and his whole program is just to keep the clean water away from the corium. Sorry, what concrete is is a paracrystalline liquid. Most people don't realize concrete is not really, in chemical terms, and in, in, in what's called inorganic chemical terms, it is a paracrystalline, slow-moving liquid. It looks solid, but it's not. Okay, well, so... I would ask him, uh, how, come, how come fuel fragments are being detected with remote equipment right. in the torus? You right. Know, that, that that's not in the concrete. The torus is in a different location. In right. The, the torus and the, and the, and these uh, the, the uh, uh, and these other devices that were set up, they're improperly engineered. Right from 1972 reports, it's well below the concrete. It's at least 75 feet below, or 30, 25 meters. Uh, and I'm going to go through the checklist again. These are technical things they could do that would reduce it dramatically. Right now, the very first thing they should do is put up a seawall and pump all the liquid radioactive water that's venting out in the seafloor and turn it into a solid waste and, and then to dispose of it. They need to have a diversion of the aquifer behind it. And I don't think an ice wall is the best way to do that. I think they need a proper full-blown diversion project so the aquifer doesn't flow water underneath the reactor site. They need to put Skevlar spider silk tents and have a filtration system. They need to have a proper remediation system, which they've tried to set up on site, but it's not working yet. 
to uh, filter out out of the water strontium. Most people don't realize all the storage containers that are sitting on site at the Fukushima Daiichi have not have not filtered out any strontium or cesium-134, 137. They just let it pass right through. It's just remarkable. And then we didn't put it, even assemble them correctly, so the rivets in the lower parts of many of these so-called storage containers were not properly assembled, so they popped off and leaked like crazy a number of months ago. And when that happened, by the way, I think it was back in the spring, our radiation detectors went to four to five times background. It's back down to fluctuating between background and twice background, so we know there's waves of radiation coming in here. It's mainly hitting more up toward British Columbia and Washington State, and then it splits because it's part of the airborne split of the of the of the of the sea-based uh, ocean current called the Karoshio that splits and spirals north toward Alaska and sails along the the coast of California from Washington State, Oregon, and and along the Baja, and then goes back out in the Pacific out toward Japan. Much of this, by the way, hits another current and carries it south across the equator to uh, the eastern slope and side of Australia and the western of New Zealand. Also, current carries it across the equator to the western side of South America, all the way from Ecuador all the way to Argentina and Chile. So when people think, oh, all these places are all safe, yeah, it's not going to get as high. It's going to take a long time to get there, maybe six years, maybe a decade or more before it really gets higher. But I predict, and this is just kind of like a number I'm pulling out of the air, that five years from now, maybe ten years, the level of radiation we're seeing now in Japan will be equivalent to most of the United States, which basically right now Tokyo should have been already evacuated. And when we're starting to see really bioaccumulation levels of massive strontium and cesium, which are some of the worst of these guys because they're very biologically active, uh, the Japanese population are going to freak out because they're they're basically trained in their culture to be passive. Uh, the reason why Homeland Security has built up all of these APCs and Bearcats and weapons and so on, and they've trained foreign troops on American soil to kind of come in and take control, including uh, take control away from the county sheriffs, which I literally I had a chance to actually have dinner last night with a deputy county sheriff, is to talk about the fact that we are at... Um, a juncture where our government is not our government anymore. And people find this very disgusting or it's obscene to say that and we really, they really like our president or maybe he's screwing up but really he's looking out for America's best interest. No, he's not. He's not paying attention to Fukushima. He's devaluing the dollar. We're going to have a dollar crash in a bank holiday this year. He's not. He's setting up the Trans-Pacific Partnership. He wants the trade right to sanctify this trade treaty. And the radiation levels are going to reach the levels in America where more and more people are going to get evident acute mild radiation sickness. <clears throat> Vertigo, dizziness, anxiety attacks, insomnia, bloating, gas, maybe bleeding from the nose and throat, sinus infections, bronchitis, maybe more deaths caused by the H1N1 flu because they're weakened states. Uh, this is going to be uh, in the Latin an ennis horribilis, a horrible year. And I don't think people grasp how there's a lot of people making statements that are out of their area of expertise, including people who have done great good like Helen Caldicott. But Helen, the fact is, taking your family from Boston to Australia, yes, it'll buy them maybe six to ten years. But if the radiation kills the Pacific Ocean and the world oxygen concentration starts dying and the, tra and the coastal water uh, circulatory pattern carries radioactive strontium and cesium and other isotopes to every ocean within 26 months, it doesn't save you or the Chilean fishery or even the Chinese. Within three weeks to six weeks after Fukushima, 22 provinces in China reported radioactivity in their food. This is not just a west-east kind of movement of air. Over the Kamchatka Peninsula and over Vladivostok in, in uh, Siberia, which is the easternmost part of, uh, of Russia, they detected radioactivity. So this is going to be a cataclysmic global disaster of unprecedented levels and I believe that this is a prelude to the international peace treaty that will happen in the Middle East uh, because the death of the Pacific is precipitating all of the nations to counter the militarism of China and uh, the collapse of the Japanese economy which is virtually identical to the one that happened in 1928 before the 1929 collapse where the Japanese pulled their money back so this is all tied together so I'm connecting some dots here for you out there so you'll understand you need to take care of your health you need to get clean filtered water which is why we have the pure water system and the whole house system 
you need to have HEPA filters. <clears throat> it's not realistic to think you're going to move 1.3 billion people from China to the Southern Hemisphere to Southern America or Australia or New Zealand. <clears throat> First off, the services, the amount of water present in these areas is limited. And uh, you're not going to, it's, the ultra wealthy have already gone. I mean, the people that could buy a place in the Cook Islands or move to Johannesburg or move to uh, some place in, in Uruguay, they're already on their way out or they have put their down payments on their apartment or their house. Uh, your comments, Chris. Well, that would be a pretty big task to move all those people, and uh, yeah, you know, I, I think it's, 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 uh, it's not think logistically it's impossible. Chinese, I think it's a Japanese. Yeah, but by the way, the Chinese. I know from talking to the Falun Gong over the past decades in China, which are persecuted and thrown in Lao Dai prison camps, that the policy of the Chinese Communist government is they want a massive reduction in their population, so they would welcome war. They want a little bit of pestilence. You know, you could make a kind of a musical, spray a little pestilence on our population, and we'll thank you. Yeah, you know, they don't want three and one point three billion people. They want maybe two hundred and fifty million, and they want them to be highly educated, and they want everybody to, you know, uh, have just a minimum size family, and they want to basically have a drone class, just like, just outside Beijing. And this is something that's classified, but I'm going to tell you, they have a quarter million fetuses growing in artificial uteri that are genetically engineered to be quote genetically superior because they have mastered cloning. And the original research was Russian and American going back for over five decades, starting at George Washington University <coughs> and, uh, and, and also at the University in Moscow at the Biological Research Institute that was also tied to the Human Genome Project. Uh, cloning is not that hard. I can give you a couple million dollars list of equipment and you can clone human beings. Pretty straightforward stuff. It's not hard. Um, you know, believe it or not, cloning dogs is harder, and you can actually go to Repat and get your dog cloned. Did you know that? Right here in California, go to Repat. Get a little bone marrow sample. I, you know, I was teasing my wife, Michelle, because I, I like to you know, remember her at times when she doesn't know exactly where I'm coming from, because I, I would be good at poker, but I don't gamble. And I said, you know, our dog's name is Max, M-A-C-S, because he's Scottish. He's a white West Wild Terrier. And I said, well, if Max dies, and he's now like, I, he was, we got him three days before 9-11, so I call him my 9-11 doggy. If he dies, then we'll have, we'll, we'll make a new pet, and we'll call him Mach 2. <laughs> you know, like the speed of sound, right? That's, that's good. And she looks at me, ah, and she gives me, she, I mean, so then she realizes that I'm pulling her leg, right? Oh, she, Bill's doing this again. Because she never knows when to take me seriously, because I'll switch gears from being like over the top to like, you know, Jimmy Kimmel crazy funny. Uh, that, that is pretty funny. I was, I was wondering if there was a longevity issue with the uh, clones, but uh, I don't know if you're talking no, about really, that. No, not really. No. Okay. No. No. They, 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 no they, the fact is, we don't even know that there's an expiry date, like your teddy bear where the arm comes off, at, and before the next Christmas. Yeah. The level of tier one science is decades ahead of what people even think exists, and it's a very strange world indeed. You know that that song years ago in the seventies. The strange, strange world we live in, Master Jack. Remember that? Yep. Sure it is a very strange world. Uh, and the strange world is we are being radioactively and electromagnetically, electrotoxically, and GMO food poisoned to death. A global omnicide is in progress as we speak. And people don't even believe us. They think we're lying, lying, lying.